Getting back together can be incredibly complicated and it can be very confusing for a lot of people. You know, there's so many things that people often end up thinking about in this whole process, like attachment styles, uh, emotional availability, rebound relationships, texting, uh, even, you know, in terms of the depth that we go into, there are things like the five stages, there's reactants, there's all sorts of things, emotional connection and everything else. But today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking this all down and telling you how you can go ahead and get your ex to fall back in love with you in five simple steps. And please stay tuned through to the end because we're going to be talking about some specific tips that you can take to put some of these steps into practice. But first, before we go ahead and get in to all of this, hello, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not. Why? Because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first step in all of this is you got to shape up, okay? Now, your relationship came apart for one reason or another. You know, um, maybe there was a lack of trust. Maybe there was poor communication. Maybe there was prioritizing things the wrong way, you know, working too much and connecting too little or, or, or whatever it might have been. You probably know what it is, right? And I know it's really easy to point your finger at your partner and to say, hey, you know, we're not together because of, you know, you did this or you did that or you didn't do this or you didn't do that. And I know it's really easy to not turn the attention to ourselves, but it's really important that we do look at how we showed up and what we could have done to more encourage um, a better relationship between ourselves and our partner. After all, number one, we are the only person that we actually have control over, okay? We cannot control them. They can do whatever they're going to do. And, you know, we can say certain things to try and convince them of certain things or um, influence them or persuade them in some way. But at the end of the day, they have their own free will, dang it. And they're just going to do whatever they want to do, uh, whether you're using mind games or reverse, psycho reverse psychology or anything else like that, or ultimatums, who knows. Um and also, you know, I think that a lot of people, even if you're kind of stuck in this non-productive cycle, you're probably doing something to contribute to that non-productive cycle happening. You know, like you're maybe emotionally unavailable yourself, or maybe there's a certain part of you that is unable to come to terms with something or accept something or something like that, right? We can get into that maybe at some other point, maybe in the Q&A later on in this video or something along those lines. But the first things first is you got to shape up. You got to understand that the breakup happened for one reason or another, and your partner's probably not going to want to come back into that same dynamic. Not necessarily saying there's anything wrong with you or that you have some, you know, major things that you got to work through. I don't know, maybe you do. But the dynamic of when the two of you come together creates something that at least wasn't working for them, right? Probably wasn't working for you either. Um, and we got to rectify this first before we move on with anything else. Because if the dynamic is not different in some way, an improvement, hopefully, but if it's not different, then there's really going to be a very, very, very minimal chance that they're going to say, hey, yeah, let's get back together. I mean, they might out of familiarity or maybe because they don't think they can get with someone else or I don't know, but that's probably not a great idea for setting yourself up, up for success. I mean, you know, who wants to gather the grandkids around and say, you know, hey, the reason that, you know, your your grandma and I worked our, our differences is because there was no one else for her to date and she came crawling back to me, right? That's, that's not what we want. We want them to actually hear a story about how amazing your relationship was and how you got to grow and connect and do all these beautiful things. I'm sure that's probably what you want. That's what I would want if I was trying to save a relationship. Um, anyway, the first thing is first, we got to take a look in the mirror and see what we can do to shape up so that we know that we're not walking back into the same relationship walked out of. The second thing that we really want to do is we want to turn off our BS machine. What is the BS machine? It is this voice in our head that is always ready to fill in the cracks, answer the unanswered question with fear, insecurity, doubt, 
um, or something along those lines, right? The reason why we call it the BS machine is because in the early days of doing all this relationship coaching stuff, I noticed that people had this sort of catastrophe prediction kind of mentality. Um, and it comes from the whole idea that your brain is a BS machine and it will constantly come up with endless uh, uh, explanations and rationales for why your situation is hopeless, why it's not going to work out, why they've already moved on, why um, you're not good enough and all of that sort of stuff, right? We all have our own insecurities and many times those will be expressed in our situation. They will be expressed in why didn't they text me back? Oh, it's because I'm not good enough. Oh, it's because they've already moved on. Oh, it's because they're a man and men move on quicker. Oh, it's because it's a woman and women move on quicker. Oh, it, it, it goes on and on, right? But the thing is, you got to turn off your BS machine. Yes, there is a possibility that the worst case scenario could be true. But in a spectrum between, okay, something great could happen or something terrible could happen, why do we jump to believe the terrible things as soon as possible? And why do we seem so implausibly skeptical about the good things? You know, it's not uncommon for me to work with someone and maybe something great is happening in their situation. And they say, yeah, I just don't think it's possible. I just don't think that, you know, uh, she's wanting to spend time with me because she thinks I'm attractive and she likes spending time with me. No, I think she's doing it out of pity or something. I mean, like, wh wh why are we rushing to that judgment? Why are we assuming the worst here? It's because of the BS machine, okay? And so the reason why we need to shut down the BS machine is, well, number one, it's going to make you feel better when you don't have this voice whispering in the back of your head, hey, you suck every step of the way. <laughs> um, but also number two, how you think determines how you feel. And how you feel determines how you act. And how you act should obviously indicate the results that you're going to get, right? And so if you're thinking thoughts that make you feel bad, then it would reason to say that you might then eventually act on those bad thoughts. If you think that, hey, you know, they're moving on, they never loved me or something, that could cause you to feel something, insecurity, maybe even resentment or bitterness, that could cause you to write up a very angry, strongly worded text message or email or handwritten letter or something like that to send to them, unleashing all of your anger and, and resentment and bitterness and everything on them. And then what do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're going to say, hey, thank you for sending me this uh, very reactionary message. I've changed my ways. We should get back together. No, they're not. They're going to say, hey, dodged a bullet with that one, or they're going to, you know, block you on their phone or whatever, right? But this happens in so many different ways. You know, if you start thinking, hey, there's someone else in the picture, I was so easily replaced or something like that, then you're going to start to feel insecure. When you start to feel insecure, you're going to start scanning for signs or, or indications or, 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 or whatever it might be. And then that's going to cause you to show up in a way where you're out of, uh, uh, where you're not being present with them when you're actually meeting up or talking on the phone or texting or something. And that's going to cause you to miss opportunities to connect. And then that's going to cause you to not connect. And then that's going to cause the two of you to not get back together, right? You see how this works. If we just stay rooted in reality, okay, I'm not in the spectrum between, you know, uh, worst case scenario, best case scenario and worst case scenario. I'm not asking you to assume the best. I also don't want you to assume the worst either, but say, okay, hey, like, I don't know where things are. And if I don't know where they are, why assume one end of the spectrum over the other? Just stay open, stay curious. But, you know, let's maybe have a tendency to live in the middle, which is like, okay, hey, maybe my ex didn't write me back, not because they are hating my guts, probably also not because they're so in love with me that they are, you know, trying to think of the most perfectly romantic thing to send to me. But those could be possible, sure. But maybe they're just a little bit confused. Maybe they're busy. Maybe they don't know what to say. And they just want an extra hour or day or something to think it out. I don't know. But in the absence of additional information, why rush to either extreme? Why not just hang out in the middle and just wait to see what happens, right? Uh, so it's really important that you learn how to shut down that BS machine. By the way, before we get going with steps three, four, and five, uh, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button for this video. It helps us out with YouTube. It's a free way to support the channel. And also, please feel free to subscribe to this channel as well, too, if you haven't already subscribed. And make sure that you hit that bell icon right next to the subscribe button so that uh, you can get notified the next time we upload and publish new videos or even when we live stream. We will get to the live stream questions later, but and I'd love to be able to answer your question in a future live stream. But um, 
I'm not, you're not going to necessarily know if I'm going live unless you are subscribed and hit that bell icon. Anyway, moving right along, the third important thing that you want to have in this whole process is healthy boundaries. Now, boundaries are really important, and this is something that a lot of people overlook. You know, you, you can do a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in the in, in upcoming points in this video, but also um, in things that we've talked about thus far, you can do a lot of great things. But there are going to be people out there that are going to try and take you for a ride. They're going to try and take advantage of you. They might try and put you in an, in an uncomfortable situation. I mean, for all I know, maybe you're dealing with a narcissist or someone who is I don't know, a sociopath or something, and they're just trying to use you for some, some reason or other. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to be a doormat. I don't want you to be taken advantage of. I don't want you to be gaslit, gaslighted, gas whatever the, the conjugated form of gaslight is. I don't want that to happen to you um, by a narcissist or anything like that. So you have to have strong boundaries and you have to be willing to enforce those when needed, okay? If someone asks you for something that you don't want, I mean, you know, for sure, maybe the first time you just say, okay, cool, I get it. You know, you probably didn't know the boundary. Uh, I'm just gonna politely tell you. Or if it's something that's like, you know, like obviously across, you know, crossing some sort of generally, um, um, accepted social norm. Okay. Maybe you skip this one, but as a general rule, you say, Hey, you know, um, that's not something I feel comfortable with or whatever it might be. Please don't do that anymore. And then if they continue to violate that boundary, then you have to have strengthening levels of, um, of, of, of boundary to enforce that to the point where you just are able to be proud of yourself for responding appropriately in that manner so that you're aligned with your own values, you're aligned with what you need, you're aligned with what you want, and you can, you know, take care of yourself first and foremost. Um, of course, we want to have empathy for where they might be, but hey, you know, you got to look out for yourself, right? Um, obviously, the the exception to this is if there's physical abuse or anything, you know, really shady like that. If that's the case, just cut and run, get out of there. Like, you got to take care of yourself. You don't have to be like, you know, hey, please do not abuse me. No, just, just, just get out of there. Just get out of there. Take care of yourself. Um, anyway, step four is to connect emotionally. We've talked about this on many, 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 many videos on this channel, but the emotional connection is really an important component. We want to be able to do this, obviously, while having boundaries as well, too. Um, sometimes people will say, hey, you know, don't listen to Clay because he's going to uh, make you into a doormat. No, have boundaries for sure. But I also don't want you to walk in like you're, you know, all that and just be like, oh, I'm an alpha male now and your feelings are irrelevant. And, you know, it's my way or the highway. I mean, unless that's just who you are. But I mean, if you're watching a video like this, that's probably not who you are. Um, I know there's a lot of people that tell you to be, you know, like, all swagger and everything like that. And I can understand where that's coming from. But as we've talked about before, when it comes to posturing and collapse, it's not going to help you build an emotional connection. You're going to be projecting a false facade of someone who has this very limited spectrum of emotions that they can feel, namely anger, frustration. Um, I don't know what else. Um, and then you're going to basically ask the other person, your partner, to comply with that. You know, hey, and sure, you're going to get better results if you do that than if you're just a doormat and let people walk over you. But is that the best way to build connection? No, it's not. You have to be able to actually build a strong emotional connection by having things like empathy, by having things like the ability to tune into the present moment and see what your partner is, is experiencing, connect with it emotionally, etc. You got to be able to balance the two, right? Um, and this emotional connection is actually incredibly important. Why? Because so few people can actually connect on an emotional level. So many people are starved and desperate to find someone who they can actually uh, resonate with, connect with, who, who sees them, who empathizes with them, who understands them, who gets them. You know, I mean, especially over the past couple of years and with sm smartphones and social media and everything, we've just been, so, we might technically be able to be more connected. You know, here I am, I'm able to broadcast to, you know, thousands of people on the internet, which is 
really cool. That's not something I could do when I was a kid. Um, but at the same time, you know, do we have the depth of emotional connection uh, just because we have a certain number of followers or because we've texted someone or something like that? Do we have the same amount of emotional connection that we could get if we were, I don't know, just sitting around a fire pit together, having a couple beers and just, you know, shooting the breeze or something? Probably not. And so we need to learn how to connect in a much more meaningful and deeper way. And when we're able to do this, we're going to stand head and shoulders above anyone else that our partner could potentially have on their radar. And because people are so starved for this emotional connection, it's like so easy to do, actually. It's like really the bar, the bar is low. You, you, you can't see the bar because it's down there. Um, but uh, uh, that's, the, that's the fourth sign. And then the fifth sign in all of this is we want to eventually put positive pressure on because yeah, we can create an emotional connection and yeah, it can feel good and it can draw people closer together. And maybe that's all you need for some people out there, but other times um, your ex might need a little bit of motivation to make a choice because getting back together can be scary. It can be a risk. It can be uh, something that causes you to put your neck out there. You know, you might have to end a rebound relationship. Again, if you can put yourself in their position, you might have to end a rebound relationship. You might have to tell your friends and family that all hate, hate, you know, your guts. They might have to tell all of their friends and family that all hate your guts uh, because of the breakup and everything um, that they're seeing you again and then, then get backlash from that and all the sorts of stuff like that. It's a, it's a risk. And so they're going to do what a lot of people try to do when they're confronted with a risk. They're going to stall, they're going to delay, and they're going to put it off. Um, and so what we often need, if we don't want them to stall and delay and put it off forever, is some motivation for them to make a move here. And so that's where positive pressure comes in. You know, something like letting them know that you're not going to wait around forever. I mean, like, you don't have to make it like, you know, hey, uh, get back together with me or I'm going to date your best. Like, if, <laughs> you don't have to do it, not an ultimatum, right? You don't have to threaten to date their best friend or you don't have to threaten to do any. But, you know, just, just let them know in a loving way, hey, where I'm at is I want this. I get it. You're confused. You're scared. You're whatever. And at the same time, this is what I want. And if you're not able to give it to me, I get it. I have compassion for you. But I'm going to be over here trying to get what I want then if I can't get it from you. I like you. I'd like it. I'd like to be able to get this relationship from you. But if it's not you, that's okay. I'm a grown up. I can find a way to do it myself. And so um, that's really what you want to be able to communicate with them. And when they start to realize that, hey, I'm connected with you, which is something I don't get from most people because social media. Um, and also, um, they realize that this is at risk of being taken away from them because you're putting positive pressure on them, they're going to probably start to position themselves and feel a good sense of motivation to uh, want to do what they need to do, end the rebound relationship, talk to mom and dad, tell their friends, you know, whatever, whatever they might need to do. Anyway, um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into Q&A here in a minute and then a little tip at the end of this video. But first of all, um, thanks so much for watching. Be sure you give this video a thumbs up. And with that being said, let's go ahead and see what folks are talking about. Now, we did have a, uh, it says there's a uh, super chat. I'm not seeing it here. Let me just keep scrolling down here. Um, here we go. We have a super chat from Genesis. Wow, that is that is a really incredible name. Um, um, is that really your name? That's, that's I've never heard that name before. Anyway, uh, questions are, which stage do you believe he is in riding the dragon or crisis point? And... Should I handle his idea of trying out a few dates with other people as a rebound? Okay, so there are, I think, okay, there's several posts here. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll have time to get to all of these. It looks like there's something like 20 or 30 posts here, if I'm counting correctly. But let's let's see what we can do here. Um, Max and I dated for two years. Uh, when he broke up with me, he was crying and confused about what he wanted in life because it seems like our careers were taking or were going separate ways. Um, he was heartbroken for about two months after and went into a depression. It has been almost seven months. Uh, the dust has settled and it turns out that we'll be moving uh, to the same city for our careers. Um, without knowing this, he reached out and said he wants to be friends in my life again. This is sounding like uh, riding the dragon here. Uh, we went out for drinks two times and we really uh, connected, talking, catching up for hours. Um, 
at our last get together, he admitted that he was still attracted to me on multiple levels and that I was someone uh, new without our history. Uh, he would that if I was someone new without our history, he would not hesitate to date me. Uh, th that's that's definitely the warm side of riding the dragon. Uh, he then told me that he has recently rejoined dating apps because he believes that we owe it to ourselves to allow other people to enter our lives because our relationship failed. Um, after more conversation, he also said that he doesn't believe he will find anyone he connects with more than me. Uh, he started crying and told me that part of him wants to jump into a relationship with me. This, this, this is definitely riding the dragon here. Um, but he is afraid of A, hurting me, B, that our relationship failed for multiple reasons, and he is afraid that we will just fail again. Um, and C, he decided uh, his, or yeah, he described his depression after we broke up and said that he is scared of going through that again um, if we don't work out. Uh, and also D, losing the friendship that he has with, uh, with you from his life uh, forever. Um, I was afraid of sharing my feelings um, and being vulnerable. Um, I was honest and told him that I do, do, do still have feelings for him um, and that I do not want to pressure either of us to jump back into a relationship right away, but rather focus on rebuilding our connection and trust and making decisions. Um, we both have been going to therapy weekly. Uh, and additionally, external factors that led to the breakup also no longer there. Um, okay, okay. So, so basically, your questions are: What stage is he at? I'd say riding the dragon uh, about this whole dating thing. I mean, right now, it sounds like he. It it sounds like okay. Um, it sounds like he's seeing a lot of connection with you right now, and it sounds like he's acknowledging that. Okay. So you're probably closer to the end stage of riding the dragon here. Now, um, what I might consider doing here is just empathizing with his confusion through all of this. You know, it sounds like he wants to get back together with you. It sounds like he's afraid that it's going to um, lead back to where it was before. And so um, what we really want to do is we want to empathize with that. Keep the pressure low. Tell him that, hey, if you really want to be on a dating app, that's fine. I can accept that. Like, if you really want, I can, you know, get on a dating app too, and we can talk about that. So we're kind of um, um, giving him a little bit of positive pressure, not too much, because I don't want us to to jump the gun uh, since he's sort of at that uh, uh, precipice, I guess you could say, between riding the dragon and crisis point. So give him a little bit of a taste of that positive pressure, but still stay more emotionally connected to him through all of this. And then um, what we also want to do is we want to continue to, to build the positive connection, obviously, but then also to um, continue to let our, our, our bodies do what they're going to do to bring us together, you know, like flirting, holding hands, putting our arms around one another, hugging, kissing, you know, you know, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you can do something to bridge that gap between uh, platonic and romantic, that can also spark um, the the romantic drive that he's probably feeling to, to, to move the two of you closer together. But at least for now, I'd say... Um, accept him where he's at and then put just that tiny little smidge of positive pressure just to see if that nudges him a little bit uh, more towards a nice, consistent um, emotional connection with you. And if you get that consistent emotional connection, then, hey, we're clear. We're in the crisis point. And then you can just start to put on more and more of that positive pressure. OK, so that's really what I'd recommend there. Uh, Genesis, by the way, very, very cool, interesting name. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. By the way, everyone, I do not do these live streams for the super chats. But again, from how I understand it, if you give me a super chat, I must respond to it. Unwritten rules of the internet. I don't know if other people follow that. The people that I follow seem to follow that. Um, so that, I'm, uh, that's what I'm doing. Anyway, with that being said, um, let's see what else people are talking about in the comments section. Um, let's see, we have, uh, Pradnya, I believe I'm saying that correctly, says, hey, Clay, hello from India. Hello. Uh, your videos are very helpful, giving different perspectives on relationships. Thank you. It must be like the middle of the night or something. Hope you're not having trouble sleeping or anything tonight. Um, anyway, let's see. Uh, we have HB who says, hey, Clay, my ex left me back in January 
and we were making great progress to uh, rebound as friends or rebond as friends. Uh, he says stuff like, I am so devastated uh, to have lost you, even though he left me. Um, I worry that he won't be empowered to give himself another chance with me if he ever sees himself, if he sees himself as the victim here. How do I make him responsible for his choices and encourage him to initiate something? Um, he keeps saying he loves me, misses me, uh, he's bereft without me, etc., but doesn't do anything. Why? Thanks for all your amazing help on YouTube. Uh, you're really a big fan of all that you do. Well, thank you so much. Uh, hope you're subscribed and hitting that thumbs up button. And if anyone else is out there, hint, also subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Um, but anyway, um, okay, why isn't he making a move? So that's the big thing here. So why is he not making a move? It sounds like he's being pretty transparent and open about how he feels, but he's still holding himself back from making a move. What I'm guessing is that he feels kind of vulnerable and exposed already for having shared what he has shared with you thus far, and he needs to see that that's reciprocated a little bit on your end so that he knows that he's just not, you know, letting it all hang out and 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 it's just going to flop. Probably not the best metaphor, but, um, uh, <laughs> um, you know, he he's kind of investing at, a, at an elevated level by saying, hey, I have these feelings for you. Hey, I'm just heartbroken without you. And if you're not willing to kind of like meet him at least partway there, he's not going to go that extra mile and make another move and, 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 and invest even more. So what we have to want and do here is we want to make sure that our investments are kind of keeping pace with one another. They're never going to be like totally even, most likely, but they should kind of both be progressing at a similar pace, one or maybe they're staggering. You, you get what I'm saying, right? Um, and so I might consider being a little bit more emotionally open and vulnerable with him about what you're going through and what you're feeling. And I think that might inspire him to make a move here um, in this in this way. Um, yeah, I think I think that I think that's the big thing here is we want to really uh, just just show him that it's okay to make a move. And so what we're doing, what we've actually been talking about this past couple of questions is positive pressure. So I wanted to talk a little bit about positive pressure in our tip for today. Now, positive pressure, it's important to actually do this uh, uh, as our fifth step because it does require having certain boundaries. If you're just totally focused in on your partner, then you may just totally miss this opportunity to apply positive pressure when you need to. Like if you are being honest with yourself and you say, okay, hey, I want to be in a relationship or I want to be married or I want to uh, uh, be in a committed relationship or I want to, um, you know, start a family or I want uh, whatever it might be. You got to you got to own it. You got to know that that's what you want. You got to know that's where you're going. If you want to have people treat you kindly, you have to know that you have to really know that. And if you know that, then you're going to be able to ask for it. And if you ask for it, now we're on the path for uh, positive pressure. Now, asking for it is, of course, one of the first steps to all of this. But then also putting on the pressure is going to actually give the responsibility back to your partner, which is like, you know, hey, I mean, you know, it's one thing if you're like, hey, you know, you don't want to be in a relationship with me right now. I want to be in a relationship. I'm, I'm out. Like, that's one thing. Right. And then they can look at you and be like, well, yeah, you know, I, I, I th there was their choice. They left. And now they don't have responsibility for it. But if you use positive pressure in a way like what we've been talking about in, you know, videos in the past and also in our courses and such, like Exclusion Program and um, Effortless Connection, then, um, you know, this is going to give them the gift of responsibility. And what do I mean by this? If they feel responsible for the situation that they're in, then they're going to feel empowered to actually change it. They're not going to be able to just point at you and say, you know, yeah, you just you just walk up and left. I have, what was I supposed to do? I had no say in the matter. But if they say, yeah, you know what, you know, they really wanted to to commit, and I, I liked connecting with them, but but you know what, I was just so scared. Now they're going to feel as if it's their responsibility for why the two of you aren't together or why the two of you don't have some additional closeness or something like that. And so what we really want to do is want to give them the gift of responsibility um, by, by just expressing what we want, letting them know that like, hey, you know, there's consequences if you stay rooted in to where you're at. Uh, what do you want to do here? Should I, 
should I do this? Should I date someone else? And then if they say, yes, you should. Yes, you should sign up for the app. Yes, you should say yes to that guy that just asked you out or that woman that seems interested in you or whatever. Then, okay, now they have some responsibility. Anyway, once again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have not already, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you want to learn more about creating that emotional connection, please be sure to check out the X Solution program over at modernlove.life slash ESP. You can find a link for that down in the description box down below. Anyway, thanks so much. Take care, and I will talk to you.